What's up, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of The Unusual Suspects. I'm your host, Vincent Oshana. We have a fantastic show lined up for you guys today. Uh, but before we get started, I'm going to go around, introduce our unusuals. We have one of our favorites, David Freiheit, is in the house. Rob Gargiulo, who is wearing pants today, finally. We have Taylor De Grande, And guys, our newest unusual suspect. Uh, I actually wrote a little thing for him. Um, hmm. He comes from a lineage of remarkable influence with his father, Mario Cuomo, serving as the esteemed governor of New York from 1983 to 1994. My family was living there. My mom loves him. Uh, he brings not just the legacy of his family's uh, last name, but a storied career in journalism. He is fearless when it comes to debating. This guy will sit with anybody. He doesn't give two shits. Um, love him or hate him, he's a force to be reckoned with. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and yours, Chris Cuomo. Chris, thank you. Thank me. you for being here, brother. Pleasure to be here. I wish there was an, an audience to like, yay, like we need. Woo! In my head, there's one. And it, no matter what I do, there's always people going, yay. But Chris, thank you, bro. I, I love this. I love this show. Uh, I love what you add. We were talking before. Yeah. Um, it's so important how you're able to connect with how people feel about things. And you have this talent to make things humorous as well. And that we need nothing more than we need that. I appreciate that. So and happy you, to be on the couch. Thank you, brother. And you, and you just, just to give you some kudos, because I mean, I told you earlier today, I get emails. I don't know who the hell got my e going, hey, I'm just letting you know I'm unsubscribing. I, swear, I don't know how the hell, not my VT email, my Gmail, which is different. It's not actually my name. God knows how they got it. I'm just letting you know I'm done. You guys, and I'm, the, I'm like, and I had to respond. I'm like, hey, listen, just... God bless you. Do your thing. We're still going to do us because I think what we do, well, what, what, what Patrick did, everybody, you guys are talking about this. They hate and they just shut up. We want to talk. We want to talk people that we disagree with. And then once people always have that, you know, I hate him left or right. But when you're with the person, you genuinely know who they are. You're going to be, you're going to be my friend for life. Period. I, I already know it. There is hate out there. I think there is, that being said, a big crowd that wants to see people from what they perceive to be the ideological adversarial side having something of a red pill moment. A lot of people think you might be having a red pill moment or in the midst of a red pill crisis. Those people are going to welcome you with open arms, I think, after they feel that you've made amends for what they hold against you. But that's, uh, that's going to be your journey because I think you have stepped into the red pill domain. And it comes hard and it comes fast. So Listen, welcome to the club. I take like 35 pills a day. <laughs> None is red. Do you understand? None of them are red. I love or, that. Nor are they blue. You have to take people where you find them. You know, another gift that Vinny has. Um, I don't judge how you feel about me. I have very little control over it, right? What I have control over is what I talk about and what points I'm trying to make. Uh, red pill, blue pill, that's their head. The more they get out of that headspace, the more they get to reasonable, not left and right, the better off we'll all be. Well, I'm not, I think the idea now, though, is the red pill, blue pill is not left versus right. It's those who are beginning to realize that the government, by and large, might be the problem and not the solution to the problem. Our politicians might be the problem and not the, so the solution to them. And I think you're in a position now, I think you... you I've it always looks felt like that. Yeah. I've always felt that. Remember, until Trump, we were in the business of policing the government. I got put into a position of having to defend institutions of the government because our, our president was attacking them. It was very perverse. Um, I have no problem with people being suspicious and skeptical of what the government says and does. They should be. Yep. Okay, guys. Um, see, and see, I love this because people are, we're having conversations. Um, all right, guys. So just really fast, I'm going to go through the stories that uh, we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, election 2024 with some stuff I've, I found out about Social Security and people voting that don't need IDs. Chris, I'm pretty sure you'll have some points on that. Uh, Easter versus the trans identity whatever the hell it was. So Taylor's going to get in on that. <laughs> Rob G, and I love these, Epstein's data breach. And something happened with that perverted demon. Um, Viva, you're going to talk about Trump's gag order. It's getting gagged harder it's and getting harder. <laughs> gagging and gagging. And then I'm also going to talk about, besides the election, uh, Mo, I'm going to talk about the f fire department. Uh, uh, New York City, they made them Crazy. put on a flag. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't wait to talk about that. But uh, before we get into the story, guys, um, if you haven't downloaded the app, Manek, if you want to talk to someone like me, or you want to talk to Chris, if you want to talk to... Dave is not there yet, or Taylor, or Rob. That's his, the Manek. There's Rob's, there's Kelly's is coming up right now. Guys, if you want to talk to Chris, if you want to give an opinion, if you want to find out about YouTube or content or production or prepping for podcasts, whatever you guys want to know, Rob is there, Kelly's there, Taylor, business, sales. She's a freaking beast. She's one of Valuetainment's top 
Show him the uh, ring. Still, show him the ring. Bam! That shit's real. <laughs> I don't know. Some kid probably died mining it somewhere. But anyway, and then Chris, <laughs> hey, whatever, whatever you want to talk about, Chris, guess what? If you have problems? Mind, oh, because yesterday somebody went in on me about Israel, Gaza. I mean, like nine messages. And at the end, I was like, hey, listen, isn't it cool that I don't see 100% with you, but we can have this dialogue and the next way to do it. So that being said, let's get into our, um, our first topic, 2024 election. So, Chris, a month ago, we had our town hall. Uh, you and Candace, it was amazing. Millions uh, of views online. People it was shared everywhere. One of the exchanges are really good uh, that stood out when you know you guys were talking about voter fraud and the, and the voter IDs. Um, and we found out. And Kelly, can you show the the chart? So 16 out of 50 states. This is old news. We all know it. Do not need uh, require ID to vote. Uh, those 16 have 212 out of the two, uh, 532 electoral votes. 11 out of the 50 states do not require uh, photo ID. 23 actually require ID. So I went to ssa.gov, which is a social security website. It's legit. You know, people are like, well, where'd you get your source? That's, that's the government's social security website. And I found out that the number of voters well, reg uh, registering without a photo ID skyrocketed this past couple months in three uh, key, uh, key swing states, Arizona, Texas, and Pennsylvania. It's freaking absurd. So since the start of 2024, Texas went 1,250,000 uh, votes. PA, um, registered votes, I'm sorry. Pennsylvania, 580,000. Arizona, 220. Thousand. And then Kelly uh, uh, put it up. This website, the HAVE, H-A-V-V, -V, Help America Vote Verification System, which coincides with HAVA, uh, Have America Vote Again Act, allows voters to register with the social security number, the four digits, and that's all they need, okay? So uh, illegals, however, are not able to get licenses there, driver's licenses, but they can get social security cards for work or the authorization permits. And then, so, so Mo. Going, going back, I know, you, I know we heard your point, we heard what you stood. When you're finding out stuff like this, is it not changing your stance, but are you seeing now how this influx of just wide open borders, it's not, it's not, Mo, it's not just, you know, stopping them. You hear Mallorca, you hear all these guys all the time, just, no, no, it's a humanitarian thing. We have to save them. We don't want kids in cages. What do you, what do you feel, has anything shifted? Has anything changed? Well, the southern border has become more and more of an urgent circumstance, right? It is the biggest domestic issue in the election. Okay. Usually it's the economy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The economy, stupid. Now it's keep them safe, yeah. stupid. So is it broken? 100%. Is it an open border? No, and I don't like hearing that, not because of politics, because it's not fair to the CBP people. Okay. You know, they're down there, they're busting their asses, they're doing the job. They are overwhelmed with flow. Yep. They don't have the staff. They don't have the processing capabilities. They don't have the places to hold people. They don't have the means to send them back. Yeah. We're being very unfair to them. So uh, do I believe that the Democrats are trying to get as many illegal entrants as possible to boost their voting ranks? I don't think that there's that kind of intelligence in, in really? either you, of the you parties. Don't, you systems. don't put it... You don't. I think it's a collateral effect that they're betting... Is there a chance that those people may be more likely to vote Democratic? Maybe, although we see Latino voters shifting right yeah. because of the strong family values. There's a lot of religiosity in their yeah. family structure that moves them in the culture wars to the right. Here's my feeling. It's easy to say, yes, we should all have IDs. We have IDs for everything else. Yeah. You should have it to vote. Okay. I have two concerns. One is they keep there's all this data out there that as you go down socioeconomic rungs, especially in major metropolitan areas where most of the population is, mm -hmm. less people who are poor drive. Less people who are poor interface with government and will go get IDs. So they say it has a disproportionate effect on them, that it's a disenfranchising thing. And I was always ambivalent about it until I realized, you know, remember Motor Voter? So there was a move that when you go to get your license, you should be able to register to vote right there. Yeah, so some I'm, states have that, yeah, yeah. Uh, some don't. Uh, the right was very against that rule. And it was seen as like, well, it was like making it too easy to vote. You'd have too many people voting that may not vote uh, for the Republican Party. So I'm a little suspicious of motives always. If, because I, I also don't believe we have a big voter fraud issue. We hear about it. I've just never seen it demonstrated. And every time they study it, they come away with a very small index of false uh, fraudulent voting. And 
it's easy to say we should all have an ID. I got one in my pocket right now. Yeah. I get it. I have two of them. I just want to make sure that everything we're doing is fair across the board. I get how it sounds like a no-brainer to do it. You know, why would I set myself up to get smacked around on an argument? Yeah. It's only because of what they say about a disproportionate impact on poor people. Well, okay, the open border, I think people take issue with just because it's semantics. Okay, It's not an open border because there are some people there, but it's effectively open. It's being invaded. Uh, the idea that you don't know if they're doing it on purpose to bank on future votes, you can never know intentions 100%, but damn certain it's going to work. Latinos leaving the Democrats in larger numbers than before is specifically because of the border issue, I believe, at least in part, That's where, they, one issue. Where, they, where they feel that their vote is no longer being respected, the process they followed is no longer being respected, and they their own life and well-being is being compromised by this effectively right. open border. But they're also culturally conservative. Uh, a lot of Latino communities um, are... Christian, nuclear family, yeah. Yeah, hardworking. And I understand what resonates with them in addition to that issue. I'm not disagreeing. But they've traditionally voted Democrat. And, and I yes. think one of the issues that a lot of minorities have with the Democrat Party, and I think it's becoming much more pronounced now, is they get used, abused, and then tossed aside when the Democrats can find another demographic to politically exploit, which is, I think, exactly what they're doing with this open border. They deny the problem in 2016, call Trump a racist for bringing it up, and then they make the problem exponentially worse so they can fill the country with people who will vote for them in, I don't know, when they get the right to vote or if they can register now, impact congressional seats and possibly register illegally to true. vote in Two this election. Two things can be true. Multiple things can be true at the same time. Um, so what do we see? I didn't like that former President Trump created what I called the brown menace. He didn't call them the brown menace. I'm characterizing his rhetoric that way. Um, we don't, we know as a matter of fact that the concern is not that you're going to have hordes of people come here who are going to rape and kill and steal your jobs. Uh, that is a boogeyman complex. There's absolutely a problem with having people come in here when you don't know who they are or why they're coming in. There's no question about that. It's silly to argue otherwise. Uh, there can't be an open border. You can't have a come-as-you-are policy. Everybody knows that. Even on the far left, they know that, which is why they're quiet about that absurdity. It's certainly poisoning their party. There's no question. Again, I think it is the domestic issue that will decide the election. However, just because they're not what Trump suggests they are, bad hombres, doesn't mean that we're not getting robbed by this problem because there's so much money that they come in and take out of the economy yep. and they get services that they're not paying for. And there's no question that you have to fix it. The better question is, why don't they fix it? The suggestion is, well, because they like that you're going to get all these new voters. I don't think that's what it is. I think that the problem works better for the parties than any progress on solving it. It gives the right the boogeyman argument. It gives the left that you guys are heartless. And it works better than fixing it. And we heard it out loud when McConnell said, ah, the politics have changed on this Senate bill. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to do anything on it now. We're going to leave it until after the election. The problem works better because it keeps people divided. And whereas you can't find a room of people, Taylor and I were talking about this earlier, everybody thinks you need to do something about the border. Everybody believes it's a priority. No matter what. So why isn't anything being done? That's the poison of the party system. Yep. But, and, and, and then, Mo, not to cut you off, but so, and, and I, I agree to a certain extent, but with the, I get it, with Trump's rhetoric, it was, and mind you, salesmen trying to be the, you know, trying to stay in there, trying to rile the troops, so to speak. But when he was saying, you know, they're not sending their best, I know it's, it's kind of a blanket statement, but I mean, as we've been seeing for the past, I want to say six months, it's gotten aggressive with literally raping young girls, uh, murdering them after. Go ahead, Rob. Well, it doesn't take, it's, they're not all bad hombres, right? Yeah. They're not, but it only took 20 bad hombres on September 11th to hijack those planes and fly them into buildings, 19, yeah. uh, plus the network that helped them yeah. plan. But uh, this was October. Uh, this was uh, U.S. Senator Shelley Capito from uh, West Virginia. 169 migrants on the terror watch list tried to cross the southern border. Yeah. That's terrifying that 169 got caught trying. How many got through and weren't noticed? And we talked to Thomas Homan the former acting director of ICE under yeah. President Trump. And one of the points he brought up is that there are programs that are helping people coming into this country illegally to get set up in different cities with different financial uh, means, right? There's, there's there's Chicago is setting up thousand dollars for apartments and furniture and that kind of yeah. stuff. There are people that are coming in and circumventing that aid 
They're going around that aid because they don't want to be identified. Why are they going around and not accepting free money? These people are coming to this country to get a better life because yep. the conditions in their countries are horrific. They're coming here. They don't have money. They don't have food. They don't have shelter. They don't have clothing. But then they're being offered free access to that, and they're choosing not to get it to not be detected. Those are the people that scare me. Yeah. And, and you got them coming from different countries. Yeah, and, and that, that was the point that I was going to get to. It's not just the scary brown guy thing. The Chinese nationals that have been coming over. I saw a video yesterday, Mo. It scared the shit out of me. It's this couple. This, these Americans are talking with them. They're using the translator app. And the guy's, like, just hugging him. You know, he's emotional that he got here to get away. Because some of them, like I said, they're trying to freaking get a better life. I get it. I mean, it doesn't help when, when the administration is like, just come on. Who we don't give a shit because <laughs> now those bad actors are coming in. And he was like, he asked them in the, on the translation, is there an influx of Chinese spies that are wanting to do terrorist stuff? By the way, I'm, I'm finding out a bunch of uh, more crazy stuff about the cyber hacking, about this bridge. The, the, it's a long, it's, it's, it, it's complicated. They're not bringing their best. And now, it might, like you said, it's Russian, it's Chinese, it's Uzbekistan, it's freaking Ukraine, it's Russia, it's people that do want to hurt. And then my question is, uh, so Chris, do you consider the tactic of using that to win an election? Is it fair? Is it legal to just say, come on, you know, come on in? Because no. like, it's not. No. Okay. I mean, you can say it, but to have a policy where you circumvent federal law to help your party would obviously... Um, be illegal. What's amazing, first of all, I, I think the the bad hombres and the remarks that Trump made, I think only were misunderstood by people who wanted to misunderstand them. When he says they're not sending their best, he's obviously referring to the fact that it's a tactic of some of these countries to deliberately send not their best. And nobody who really heard what he actually meant understood him to say all illegal immigrants are bad. All illegal immigrants are illegal by definition, but not necessarily bad people. But among those illegals are plenty of bad people. The irony about the voting stuff, it's so absurd, is that the same party that says, if you need a license to drive a car, you should need a license to own a gun, then say, if you need a license to drive a car, you don't need to show photo ID to vote. Within the left, and I'm saying the traditional left, it's mutually incompatible ideas that they hold at the same time. And their arguments, if you apply one mutatis mutandis to the other, they bump heads. And so you need it. You, you want to own a gun? Fine. You need a license to drive a car? Get a license to own a gun. You want politics but to not include hypocrisy? I, I, I would expect a little bit more foresight, but nobody holds them to these fundamental Never. paradoxes because, of their own reason. Because you have this absurd Jets Patriots political system, whereas you are on the team, the team can do no wrong. Yep. You see no problems with what your team does, and you only see the problems on the other team. And that's fine for football, but it is not fine for our politics. And I'm telling you, I've never been more sure of anything. The party system is the problem. The good news is the solution is bottom up. People need to leave the parties. Be independents. Be free agents. Be critical thinkers. Do not subordinate your interests to a party. You know, that is absolutely the fix. I would say the outlier to that, though, and a lot of people, although you can say that they don't criticize Trump and that they own, they agree with a lot of people say everything that he says, but what makes him the outlier and many people who follow Trump is that they did criticize both parties. That's why yes. they, they, they like Trump is because we don't want to fall into it. It's just yes. left. It's just right. It's like, no, actually, it's both of you guys, but we need someone who's going to actually communicate that. And just to bring it back to the voter ID thing, and, and when they say... Whoever is saying that it's going in front of police or government, I don't know. I've got I've got an ID and I've gotten a passport. There's not bodyguards or anything like that. You literally go in. I just got a passport. You show your document. There's probably a security guard. I don't even know if he has a gun. I don't even know if he's certified. <laughs> and they're like, okay, they do your documents. Take you know, take your photo and you're off. It's not like this big scary system. So I think that's a boogeyman too. Like, oh, they don't want to go in front of the government. It's like a mall security guard. He goes in. He checks. Yeah. You you get your thing and you go home. It's like such a non controversial situation. I agree. Do that. So, so, so Mo, let me ask you this, though. Is there any hope to change that system? I mean, not just the independent, because, and, and again, I think it's a uniparty. Just like when they say left or right or my friends on the other side of the aisle or, or when you see something like, I'm just throwing something out there, like Fauci goes in front of Congress. One side is like kind of protecting him. The other side's like barking and uh, what was it, Rand Paul? Just, and Mo, at the end of the day, nothing happens. Never. Zero yeah. happens. So is there a chance, besides an independent, just another party to go against this left-right nonsense because... And again, this is going to sound weird coming out of my mouth. Common sense should prevail. We should have a closed border. These jobs should be going to 
Americans. All this, you're giving out money to illegals. There's a homeless guy on the floor dying in front of you. He's on drugs. And it's, is there uh, ever going to be a chance for anything different? Yeah. There's, What's it going to take? There's always chance. You have two things that change the status quo, right? First is a God forbid, which is tremendous crisis. Yeah. After 9-11, there were all these fights going on. Uh, Bush was in bad shape. Giuliani, who became America's mayor, was in bad shape yeah. on September 6th, let's yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what happened? We all became scared by the same thing. Yep. All those fights stopped. And Weird. we were fingers into a fist of we have to go get the guys who did this to us. Mm -hmm. Now, we happen to have gone to the wrong country. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. We, Weird. But, well, but we were together. So crisis will do it. Yeah. Also, uh, ultimately, a understanding of it being a collapse. So where I see the potential for collapse is when Perot ran and influenced the outcome of the race mm -hmm. and wound up having Clinton become president yep. of the United States, yep. the Republican Party went through a very significant reassessment period and figured out how this had happened. Mm -hmm. and what they needed to do to connect with who their voters were. And they wound up, to your point earlier, on the state level, they created a firestorm across the country of legislative and gubernatorial wins all across the country. The reason that Republicans, they have a registration deficit. They're more registered Democrats than there are Republicans. Yeah. But they have more influence on the state levels because they put in the time after what happened with Perot to reassess how their party worked, mm -hmm. how they won on the local level to take legislatures so that they could have a hand in redistricting, you know, how the congressional districts work, or the governor's offices. I see that now. I think if Bobby Kennedy gets on enough ballots okay. to make a difference in the election, I don't think he can win, I don't think so, but if he gets on enough ballots, the Democratic Party, I believe it will uh, change the race to Biden's disadvantage. Really? If Bobby stays in, I think the Democratic Party will be forced out of collapse to reassess how disassociated it's become from what its base was. Yeah, that's, that's, that's too optimistic. I don't think that's going to happen. You're right about crisis brings about change. Unfortunately, the crisis after 9-11 brought about the Patriot Act, which some people might argue was part of the design of letting these crises happen in the first place. They do tend to benefit both parties. And to the uni party argument, agreed. When Trump came in, above and beyond his mean words of, you know, they're not presenting their best, he went to build the wall. And then what happens? Legislation to prevent him from appropriating the funds to build the wall, as if back in 2016, the Democrats wanted the problem, exacerbate the problem for as long as he can for political profit, and then say the problem has gotten too bad now. And those who oppose our bogus solution of that border bill are part of the problem. It's, I agree. It's, it's very deceitful. I agree 100 percent. Everything you just said vis-a-vis -vis the border, it's 100 percent true. And... It's a shame because I believe it's artificial. That is an easy problem. I've been covering it for 25 years. I was going to just say that for I, a while. I have been down there so many times, okay? And the, I, I hate what we do to the men and women who do the job. You know, CBP is not like other cops, okay? Uh, I'm sure most of the people watching now, or that you should support your local police, but these people are different. They're like half social worker. These people, a lot of them have family and ethnic connection to the same people who their police yeah. are coming across. Yeah. They have huge hearts. They're a tremendous risk. They're incredibly outmanned. So I'm always slow to kind of say nobody's doing anything. They're killing themselves down there. Yeah. They say the same things every administration I've covered it with. They ask for the same things. It's never a wall. They're fine with barriers, physical barriers where you need them, surveillance barrier, all that stuff they want. But that's not the first thing they ask for. It's not the second thing they ask for. The first thing is rule changes. Yep. Economic asylum is not asylum. OK, it's not what the international standards are supposed to be about. And even if they are, it doesn't matter. Our laws come first in this country. They want rule changes. The second thing they want is processing capacity. Give them the ability to assess whether your asylum claim is legit. Give them the magistrates, the tribunals and places to hold you mm -hmm. so that they don't have to do catch and release. Those are the first two things they ask for. Mm -hmm. And everyone has known it. And they won't do it for them. And they say, well, we need to do comprehensive. It'll never happen. It will never happen. And they know it won't happen. And I feel bad for the people who do the job. 
every it's the worst problem we have that everyone knows how to fix. That's yeah, it's true. And, and then and then you get I'm not to always point the finger at the Biden administration, but I will. Then you get the media lying about border agents whipping migrants. You get the media kids lying about them being kids in cages, yeah, kids in cages uh, about them being responsible for the deaths of people, the, the the family or the young kid that actually died on the Mexican side and not on the American side. And so above and beyond not finding any. Uh, long-term solutions they demonize the people who are doing this in real time i mean it's almost as though they want to exacerbate the problem and i think they do and i know you have to go to the next story yeah. but if i may w make one more point i don't know if you guys have ever read the book built to last but if you do i would recommend it it's mm -hmm. our book of the month this month but you know you were talking about um crises bringing people back together obviously we had civil war so we've had we've had bad times in this country where we really didn't agree however i feel like how part of what we have to come back to and what it talks about in the book from a business perspective but also uses countries as a is having a core ideology going back to the fundamental principles like the constitution the declaration of independence because like you mentioned we can all agree on some things but if we don't ever think about the things we agree on which is our core foundation which makes us a country then how are we ever going to get past these things without a border we don't have a country that's for anyone like if you don't have actual means of what it means to be a country which is your ideology and the borders that consist of what the geographic is so i think part of it is we have to go back to the fundamentals we have to go back to what it means to be america and if we do that as patrick would say the future looks bright damn right all right guys I, hey well put i love that conversation guys moving on taylor and we talked about this on the pbd podcast yesterday but i want to hear your angle easter versus trans visibility day take it away Yes. So as you guys know, the White House declared Easter the day, the day of resurrection for Christians, Catholic as transgender day and vis uh, visibility. So as a Christian nation, as a president who proclaims to be a Catholic and with the you know how they say politics is downstream from culture. My question proposed to, to all of you, but Chris, you first, what? What does this have to do, like what cultural impact does this have to do when it comes to re um, making this announcement on Easter as a Christian nation? And, and, and Chris, before you answer, just to clarify, that it was on March 31st, but it, uh, whatever day it fell on this day. So just, just to clarify, because I know people are going to talk trash. The fact that they were promoting it and letting you know, no mention of Jesus. And I know, Chris, you're going to go into it. No mention of the resurrection, all that yeah. stuff. It was specifically to go after the small minority, 0 0.0, whatever, 1%. Yeah, right. and, and I don't want, like, not you can answer however you'd like, but not, oh, did Biden know? I, not really interested in that, but, like, from a cultural perspective, what does this mean to the country, to the culture? Um, what are your thoughts on that? So I'll give you the full answer, and you guys... Um, stop me whenever you want to make your own points. One, yes, I am a Christian. Uh, I do not put my faith on people. I don't like proselytizing. Uh, I don't think it's a part of the faith. I know people disagree with that. I choose to believe and have faith because I am really flawed <laughs> and I am desperate for anything that will help me get to a better place. Gotcha. That's why I choose faith. It is not a badge of superiority. If anything, it's me waving the flag to let you know that I am worse than most. That's what faith is in my head. So this is not about me taking up the Christian cause, all right? That's not what this is. That's not my place. Two, whether Biden knew or not is not an excuse. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. He's the president of the United States. I don't know what's worse that you didn't know, you know, the ir ignorance or arrogance. I don't know which is, which is a better path. This was a lose-lose. I believe that the transgender community needs protection. We know this. They are targeted. Targeted but by whom? Because this is a question that I, I know when we talk about violence within the trans community, I don't know that it's coming from cisgender white males. I believe most of it comes from within the community itself. Whether it does or it doesn't, you are in the same place. I'm not saying that the white man is a bad thing. That's a different discussion that Pat and I are, are working on, which is there is an assault on masculinity mm -hmm. uh, and what it means to be a man and what is okay and what isn't. That is absolutely real, and you're seeing reverb to it all over the internet now mm -hmm. that I believe is going way too far and is a little too toxic. Uh, but that's real. I'm not blaming cisgender males. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm saying I'm okay with visibility. I'm okay with tolerance. I'm okay with protection. But this was lose-lose because you made it seem like you were elevating them to the same status Good point. as the most important Christian holiday. 
And that means that you're driving animus towards them. But you say that, I mean, I know you, it seems that you might be suggesting that as though that's not exactly the plan. The, I, I, many people rightly believe that those who are without religion will have their religion manifest in other ways and that this trans ideology, call it a cult or call it a bad religion, has been put on that pedestal to the point where if you don't bow down and pledge allegiance to it, uh, you are public enemy number one. I mean, a lot of people say that is exactly what they're doing on purpose. I think, yes, I've, I've heard of that. I, I think I've heard that on this couch. But uh, <laughs> I don't agree with that. I'm very slow on anything conspiratorial, okay? Why? I am very skeptical of the ability of any of our major mechanisms to do anything that intelligent, okay? Uh, the idea of organized anything, to me, there's so much more randomness than there is... Um, planning in what I see in our political movements. But here's what I know. You have a lot of people who probably didn't have an opinion about transgender people or what it meant, who now do, and it's negative, because you made it um, something that came uh, at the same time and in the same way as what really matters to them. Now, some people will say, well, too bad, they matter too. But time, place, and manner. Okay, time, place, and manner. Easter's different every year. Crazy Gregorian calendar stuff with the full moon and everything else. Who yeah. cares? Uh, yours is May 5th, you know, this year, yeah. whatever. But you set them up to be an adversary. And shame on the administration for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, go, thing, go, go ahead. Uh, talk, the, the organization required for this to be collaborative, you know, people don't need to meet in a room, but I, I sent Kelly the, the screen grab. I put together a little this montage. Can we see this? Where you get, I mean, it, it's... It's quite clear. You get, to, you know, the, the tweeting from the New York Attorney General, from Alex Soros, who might, you know, very well have work. the, the might... dark hand in all of this. Ever, Gretchen Whitmer, Karine Jean-Pierre. It's quite clearly not orchestrated necessarily behind closed doors, but it's this, you know, mob mentality. It feeds off each other. And the idea, first of all, if people didn't have a negative impression about this trans, it's not about visibility anymore. I said this. It's about subjugation. In a, in a very religious sense. If they didn't have a negative impression about this, when Leah Thomas, a biological male with an operating ding-dong, having sexual relations with women while he's competing and, and beating women, if nobody had a negative impression then, I don't know when they're going to come around. Religious people, I presume, have always had some religious objections to mutilating the body, altering a body that is made in the image of God. Uh, Unless so, they're doing it for their own religious purposes. Well, quasi that mutilation is okay. Well, yeah, you know, exactly. I've, I've had this argument. I don't, male circumcision is not mutilation, in my humble view, because I wasn't impede. talking about that. Well, the, but Although female, they way overdid it on me. Female, female, <laughs> well, but this is the irony. Is that, <laughs> yeah, never mind. There's a suit in I'm, there somewhere. <laughs> I'm trying not to I get canceled yeah. today. And we're going to go deeper but after this. The, the idea that, you know, we've always been uh, against female genital mutilation, especially in kids. It's, it's, it's illegal. But now all of a sudden when kids want to cut off breasts, cut off penises, yeah. you give it a nice name, gender affirming care, and all of a sudden it's no longer female genital mutilation in minors. It's I, wild. Look, I totally understand why you feel the way you do. Okay. Uh, I am not as developed in my opinion structure around the issue. I really try in my own personal life. If it doesn't affect me, there's a high indifference uh, bar for me. Uh, I don't go out of my way to have opinions about things. Uh, what would I do if it were my kid? My wife and I have talked about this. We actually see it differently. Um, I believe, as we heard yesterday, when we did the podcast, yep. Adam uh, was doing this volleyball thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And with models playing volleyball. And one Sounds of them like Adam. was transgender, this beautiful transgender woman. And she said something that's really important that people need to hear. So Adam's like, well, tell us your story. Like, you know, which, you know, was a little, little, little awkward, awkward, right? Yeah. Um, and she says, well, when I was 25, I had uh, the, ge the transition surgery or whatever the right yeah. phrase is. And that's the key. I have never, in my personal experience, and I've, I've had a pretty good amount of interviewing these people, spending time with transgender people and people in the related communities. It's an adult decision. And I've never heard one of them not tell me that, that if it were my kid, now we're saying that kids that I won't let my kids choose what subjects they take. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I barely let these kids go through their own college application process. I'm going to let them decide what gender they are as minors. To me, that is an unacceptable standard, but that's me. That's personal to me. Um, here's what I'm saying. You can feel any way you want about it. 
when you put it on the same day and on the same level of significance as the resurrection of Christ, <laughs> now I know a lot of people are not maybe watching this show, but people are going to roll their eyes and be like, yeah, because that really happened. So Cuomo is saying that a fiction, which is Jesus, deserves more respect than a reality, which is transgender. Yeah, I am. Good. Because you live in a country where people care about this and you put them into a position now to be in opposition to something that you want them to have tolerance for. And it was a mistake. And yeah, you do hear it more on the left. No question. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a party wanting to be more about tolerance. But your point is also well taken. If I don't want to feel the way that you feel about it, you should not punish me. And that is an extension of the poison in our politics overall. If you and I don't agree about the border, it doesn't mean that I should go to the fifth circle of hell. It just means that we don't agree on that. I, well, I'm just I, there might be some people who say if you if you don't agree that it's wrong to chop off a 14 year old girl's breasts, you might deserve to go to the fifth circle of hell. I mean, there's there are certain things where it's not it's no longer just we can agree to disagree. It's there are fundamentally immoral questions at issue here and fundamentally wrong and evil things at play. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, and that's when it gets into the point of and, and I. I disagree with the, and I, I understand that you're basically your comment about the conspiracy thing, Chris. You don't think that they're good enough or smart enough to get together. And I don't think it takes that much to have people that are of influence, of power, and they control the narrative to get together and go, you know, guys, know what? This president, I'm just being hypothetical, this president doesn't want war. He wants all this shit. We're going to kill him. That's what we're going to do. I think, I think we have to give them a little bit more credit because evil, think about how positive people spread love and do their thing. Evil gets together and does the same thing. But going to the transgender thing, I think, and you nailed it, picking that day, look at, look at what they're achieving, okay? You are pissing off. And what was the percentage, Mo, of, of uh, Christians in America? Let's just say America. Forget about the world. You're still, you're still at about 50%. 50%. Half of Americans that go to church and are furious now, okay? They're going to get, now when they see these transgenders, they see these flags, they're going to be like, you know what, let's go get them. So now you're pissing off both parties. And as we've been seeing as of late, a lot of these mass shooters are, which they're hiding their manifestos. We're not finding out they're trans for months after because they don't want to. That was a mistake also. Huge mistake. I think it's, that, that's where it's like, wait a minute, you guys are purposely doing it. I don't think it's a conspiracy. I don't think it's a conspiracy. I think it's purposefully done to further divide an already divided nation. You do not do something like that. Not like they picked it a lot. Again, misconception was, oh, they said Easter. I don't care about that. I care that you were promoting it so much and not one time, Chris, did I hear Jesus Christ. Well, and the rebuttal to that argument, oh, it changes every year. March 31st has been Trans Visibility Day since 2009. That's the steel man of the other side. Yes. Flip side, Biden's been president since 2020. 2020, 2021, yeah. has never officially proclaimed it to be Trans Visibility Day and picked Easter time, Sunday to exactly. do it. Exactly. Yeah. Did and he celebrate it in previous years on Instagram or Twitter? I don't believe did he? he did, but no, that's a good question. Oh, Nobody's supposed asking. to answer it. Yeah, we were, <laughs> I, I believe it was this the first time. This is exactly time. what you do, which is why you're allowed to sit. I'm going to go right now. Jamie, you're sitting with a laptop listen. on you. You're <laughs> not listening to any of yo, us. I, and I, now I, you I, ask I, us. He was downloading <laughs> porn, which he always does. But yo, he left us a cliffhanger. Me and Paul were like this. <laughs> like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain. Jamie, great point. I'm fairly certain he didn't and certainly did not proclaim it to be the official day. He proclaimed it this year and was the first time. The bottom line also to the trans visibility issue. Nobody ever had a problem in my lifetime with trans people, and it's not because they didn't exist. We all grew up, we had a person in the family who used to dress up like women. No, nobody cared. It only became an issue when it was forced down our throats, and it no longer became about visibility and tolerance. It became about compliance and subjugation, forcing other people to use preferred pronouns, forcing women to be beat by men in women's sports, and have us be demonized for saying, I that's see not the right. cultural. I see the cultural play uh, that you're outlining. I guess, and, and help me on this, okay? I feel that this issue is exaggerated in its significance. I'm not saying that the dynamic is, I, I hear it all the time from people that I don't want to have to say, uh, if, I, if I look at you and I say, hey, how you doing, buddy? I don't want you to try to get me fired because I didn't call you Alice or whatever you want to be called. <laughs> I understand the sensitivity. I do feel that it's exaggerated in terms of how much this matters in society. When you see a guy who's my size um, playing against high school girls, it's a no-brainer that this isn't right. And until they can say, well, 
Uh, it turns out that as long as there's this much hormone therapy, that they're just like, look, I have kids. I watch them play sports. I have seen trans kids playing. They are physically superior to the other girls that they're playing with, okay? It's a no-brainer. It also happens very, very rarely, okay? I just don't want to exaggerate it. We have so many real problems that are happening on a large scale. Transgender females ruining women's sports is a very low problem. Does it happen? Do we have cases? Yes. To me, it's like illegal entrance raping people or killing people. Yeah. Does it happen? Yes. yes. Is one too many? Fine, if yeah. that's your standard. We just don't apply that standard anywhere else on anything, but fine, it is. But that's not our rape problem. That's not our murder problem. That's not our problem with women's sports. Yep. That's not our problem in society in terms of cultural tolerance. I feel like we're allowing, and maybe it is the left, maybe you're right, that we're allowing the left to weaponize this issue and make it something that it doesn't deserve to be, not because tolerance isn't the right thing. They're just using it as a, a sword and a shield when yeah. it shouldn't matter that much, yep. as you I, said. I would actually say it's it's a really big issue, and the reason for it is it's so much more than just saying it's a small percentage of the population, right? We can agree, we can Very all agree small. on that. But what we talk about is we need to protect the trans. The government needs to protect transgender. The government needs to protect its people, <laughs> like whether you're black, brown, you're white, you're male, you're female. That's part of what they have to do. But we always talk about okay, well, they might be disenfranchised because they're transgender. We never talk about the people at a young age who are influenced by the culture when you see Hollywood and you see all of these different award shows now in dresses, now talking about trans, now everyone on these different shows, they're promoting it. So although it might be a small percentage of the population, it's everywhere. And we have to, considering it might not be me or specific to myself, thinking of young children, they're very moldable. So if they're seeing it in books, they're seeing it on uh, Instagram, they're seeing TikTok, it on oh yeah, all of these different platforms. Social contagion is the term. A hundred percent. absolutely a fad. Now it's just not the goth fad that, oh, you look back at pictures where you had weird hair. Now it's, oh, I went through the trans fad and I've done irreparable harm to children. And then what about the what about the young children who do that? And then they turn 25 and they realize, uh -oh. I don't know why I did that. Like if you guys saw so me when I was- transitioning is a real thing. It's but, a real thing. But, if you guys would have saw me, like thank apostates. God I wasn't born in this generation where my mom was like, oh, you should actually shave your hair and be called Tyler because I wore boy shorts. I wore jerseys. I wore bandanas. I was the biggest tomboy. Thug. If that was me today, they'd be like, you should be a boy. Yeah. And I would have been so influenced. I would have been probably confused because I'm like, well, well, but thankfully I wasn't. And so when I say it's not a big issue percentage of the population wise, it's very influential, especially when it's affecting the minds yeah. of the children. Well, what were you going to say? So I did go back <clears throat> through the Instagram page of the White House and Kelly, I, I sent you the screenshots. I don't know if you can pull them up real quick, but I wanted to go back and just see, did they post anything last year? Okay. Um, the White House only posted one message on Easter. It was just one photo that said, in the past Easter. four years, in the past no, four no, 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 no. This year, they only posted one photo. But if you take a look, these are the post from last year and there's the easter bunny if you could scroll to the next photo kelly let's see there's one two that one says today we celebrate the sacrifice and recommit ourselves to okay. the love of god so these are all easter related can you scroll to the next photo these are all Easter related oh, wow. as well. So God. lots of Easter last year, uh, not a single post for National Trans Visibility Day at all. Period. Not around Easter weekend, not in the weeks leading up, not in the weeks yeah. leading after. So this is the first year where the White House goes and celebrates National Trans Visibility Day with a post. Right. And it just so happens that it's on Easter Sunday God. of yeah. all days and to celebrate. And Karine Jean-Pierre and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. I love and the pronunciation. By the way, you know he's from <laughs> Montreal. From Montreal. So it's it's Karine Jean-Pierre. It's very strong. strong. I'll, I'll say one thing just before I forget it is it, it has been weaponized and i say by the left and it's not to solve a problem it's to create one because you go back 20 years and i'm thinking uh miami vice crockett and oh geez tubs. 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 crockett and tubs you go back to schwarzenegger in predator movie you go back to uh all of these movies where you had racial harmony and nobody had an issue with it nobody even asked the question because it wasn't being jammed down your throats come obama come justin trudeau in canada they say oh we got a problem here intolerance we got to force all of these racial requirements we got to force these social issues knowing damn well they're making the problem worse in fact they're probably making a problem where there was never one to begin with yep. the more they focus on this and claim that there's a special class of people who are being particularly treated badly when 
In fact, I think, you know, tolerance was probably at the highest before the issue got focused on. They're just making it worse. They're just dividing and conquering. And it is another problem for them to solve and say, holy cows, we need more laws. We need more surveillance, et cetera. Yeah. Not a problem to solve, a problem to exploit. Oh, I see. A, yeah. a problem to create to and create, then and weaponize then, and then yeah. exploit. Look, I, I see it similarly in terms of the dynamic of them creating problems that work for them in terms of keeping the division dynamic going. Uh, I really believe that the poison in the system is the two-party system. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think if you didn't have that, um, would you have similar dynamics? Yes, but not to the degree. And degree is everything, to Taylor's point, okay? Um, it's, you know, what are you making of this? Why are you doing that? I, I think that's very true. I just believe that it may be everywhere. Um, my kids are super sensitized to this in terms of, I guess, just their tacit acceptance of reality, like uh, the N word. Okay. My kids live in fear of the N word the way I used to live in fear of being mugged when I was growing <laughs> up in Queens. Like, yeah. if, if I were to say that word, and what I say to them all the time is, okay, look, I, I get it. I'm not saying you should be dropping N bombs or any racial epithet anywhere, but what do you do to? show tolerance and to show that you care about people of different races other than just not say this ugly yeah. word. Yeah. And I think it's an extension of what you're talking about, which is the culture of political correctness. We have gotten very deep into the game of what to say versus what to do. And everything is about what's right and wrong. And you can't say that and you can't do that. And if I say that your luxurious locks, uh, very that, luxurious, that, you know, <laughs> that, you know, if I'm like, boy, you know, it's, it's got like a woman's hairdo. Whoa. What would you just say? It, um, the irony to that is like, you know, people will compliment or they'll talk about my hair. But if but you got a nice head of hair, change, change race. That's well, objective. But, 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 then it, but I think it just goes to the issue of once the racial identity politics card has been p played and overplayed and everyone's looking for it everywhere. Someone comp compliments or mentions my hair. It's a non-issue. If it's of another race and you talk about their hair, and you say nice yeah, hair, it becomes over. racist. It's yes, 100 percent. Now, is there a is there a good and a bad side? Well, yeah, you, you want to be sensitive to people. But it's about degree, again. It's yeah. about degree and about what it means. Now, I don't agree that we never had any of these problems until we created them recently. I think that we are uniquely judgy in America. Big time. We are a judgy people. And we see it even in, you know, social media has turbocharged it. People feel the need to have opinions about everything. When you go to other countries, and you, and you know this from uh, exposure to different cultures, it's so hard to get opinions out of people in, in Europe. They'll be like, well, listen, I mean, they're doing this party this way, and this party is doing this thing this way. And really, we have to be careful because, you know, in, like, in, in Paris right now, in France, what they're dealing with, with yeah. a, a new wave okay. of extreme Islamism Big that they're having to deal with. Yep. They'll give you 50 different reasons that they have concerns about things, but they won't tell you what they're supposed to do. In America... They give you a, an opinion right away. They have nothing behind it. Nothing. And this plays right into that. Yep. So that now you have people focused on transgenderism has no role in their life. Yeah, at all. I agree. I, I feel agree. like opinions would probably be well. Of course, they have to be educated. You would hope so, at least, because then you look at Europe and you're like, yeah, I can see why you guys have a lot of problems, too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have opinions on nothing. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, good topic. Uh, Taylor, uh, we're going to be moving on. Next topic is Rob, my favorite Epstein data breach. What the hell happened? Yes, uh, so there was a great article. There is right now up at VT.com, so you'd want to go and check it out, uh, written by Shane, our writer at VT.com. Uh, 200 Epstein Island visitors can now be tracked after cell phone data breach. Uh, Wired Investigations revealed that cell phone data from around 200 cell phones linked to visits on Little St. James Island, Jeffrey Epstein's private little island, have yeah. been leaked. The data includes pings to the island and then pings back to presumed owners of those cell phones Homes or offices from July of 2016 to Epstein's arrest in 2019, uh, which this, of course, follows his conviction in 2008 for uh, procuring a child for prostitution. So these are people who, file. Yeah. So these are people who knowingly went and visited an island owned by a convicted pedophile yeah. where there is rumored to be sexual activities with underage minors that were taped 
and filmed. Uh, consumer data company Near Intelligence are the ones who brokered the data. And here's what's interesting. The data indicates high traffic to Little St. James from over 160 locations in the United States, the Cayman Islands, and Australia. So what that means is that cell phone data that pinged on the island, 200 cell phones, yeah. 160 locations were tracked back to the United States, Cayman Islands, Australia, and Ukraine. Most of which, Kelly, if you can pull up, happen to be in the northeast in Florida, kind of suspicious that they're all in that Maryland area where all of those cell phones that pinged well, at Epstein that, Island also pinged back wait, to uh, so, Washington, so, D.C. So, yeah, I was going to say, so Washington, the elites on that right side, and then, I mean, there's a lot in Florida as yeah, well. Yeah, notable states on the list include Florida, Massachusetts, Texas, Michigan, and New York. Uh, other Epstein properties and nearby locations like a St. Thomas Hotel and the American Yacht Harbor were also visited by the phones, but most specifically they did ping at Little St. James Island. In fact, there, wow. which, Kelly, is there any way to zoom in any closer? Or is that as close as we can get? Because I believe there that's, she goes. The, that's the tipping point, right? Like, wow. that's where you see that weird structure that had the weird. Do you ever see the weird structure on Epstein Island that of had the, yeah. the weird symbol? That, yeah. I don't know what it means, but I just know it, it looks means odd. pedophiles. This is oh. your home. I didn't know that's what pedophiles it meant. Pedophiles come here. So it signals like a, other like a pedophiles. Beacon. It's like a, like a lighthouse for pervs. <laughs> I, 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 am not, I am not a <laughs> proponent of dogs. And there's no but to that. Yeah. I presume to the extent this information has been leaked, we have the cell numbers. The identities of these individuals is known or can be known. Uh, do we know that? I don't know. Is it a metadata thing or is it? I don't know the answer to that. I know that they so the it's very odd. All of the other apps are, or the maps that Wired released were interactive. You can zoom in. You can see yeah, exact yeah. locations on the island. Yeah. But when you try and zoom in on the locations pinged to the United States, you can't. It's not an interactive map. However, that being said, if they were able to track that data, the med, the metadata on the cell phones, then yeah, I would assume that these people's information could eventually well, like, become public. What do you public. do with it? Let's say we get the list and say, we know who the 200 are. What do, what do you what do you do with it? What do you want to know? The, the aggregate knowledge of the interwebs would very swiftly find the answers that the FBI and the CIA probably don't want to find. You, you put that out in the public domain, and I'm not saying you should because it is doxing, but you let the knowledge, the, the people at 4chan look into this, they'll find everybody. They'll find the crimes that somehow the CIA, the FBI, have not found any of the clients of the Epsteins. You've got two people convicted of trafficking, and they don't have clients. It's a, it's a bizarre and, thing. And, and here's my thing, Chris, because I want to ask you. But let, Okay, let's just be completely honest with each other. Jeffrey Epstein, fa I'm giving facts, was flying all these elites there. He had cameras in every single room. That's what Ghislaine and... That's what that we these are facts underage underage uh, girls, some underage boys as well for let's just take the prince. Who was the prince? Andrews? Andrew. Prince so, Andrew. Look, so he is it's they already she she went deposition. She did everything. He had sex with an underage girl. Fact. Plain and simple. We know he did it. And what did the queen do before she passed away? His punishment was she removed his um public royal duties like he couldn't go out and wave or how is that person i don't care what your status is chris you had sex with an underage girl how is that not prison power protects itself like go go a little bit deeper for me because it should be the law i don't care where you are or who you are if well he denies he denies it right yeah so not the girl though they're using yeah i know but they're, so they're going to use that as cover to do what they want um, why did people have anything to do with Epstein after 2008? Eight. Yeah. Because okay. he had a lot of money and threw great parties and he could hook them up with people that they found valuable to them. Mm -hmm. Now you can say, well, that's disgusting. Yeah, okay. Well, welcome to humanity. Um, and you're going to see people red, blue, rich, you know, famous, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know the guy. I have been rumored to have been on his plane. That's you know you're not going to be one of those things if it ever. There's <laughs> Chris. Zero, there's zero. Give me your cell phone. There's zero <laughs> chance. Here's the problem. Yeah. It doesn't matter anymore. You talk about doxing. I I like that you have a standard, but it doesn't exist anymore. You, it. We are all allegation, no proof. And I'm really hoping that if anything changes in our society that changes because it has gone so crazy far. Listen to what you just said. They have been accused and convicted of trafficking, okay? Maxwell, as far as we know, wasn't doing it for herself. No. Okay? Uh, Epstein likely was, but 
no one else ever had sex with it, any it, of these yeah, people. Exactly. It's laughably implausible. By the way, right. we'll, we'll get to the accusations without substance when we get to the next Trump case. But yeah. um, no, it, it, it's laughable. The issue, Prince Andrew was the one who gave the interview and he says, oh, actually, uh, I couldn't sweat back then because of some yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Which, oh, yeah. which the palace did not want him to do. <laughs> they advised him not to. They were like, the listen, queen, you weirdo, the... don't go out and talk to anybody. Just keep your dumb face shut. And, and he went out and was like, no, I can't sweat i was at a pizza party i you very know i very specifically remember a children's birthday party that i took my children to at a pizza place right. that turned out not that to was exist. crazy the i can't sweat thing um there's no there's no question it's just it's just crazy it's what desperate people do desperate people do desperate things but there was a time that i'd like to get back to where if you're accused of something you were able to say wait a minute i i wasn't there like dershowitz yeah. i wasn't there when she says that I was there. I don't know who this person is. Yeah. And, and that, that was given thing. weight. Yeah. The, the underwear thing for Dershowitz was he was getting a massage in Florida. And so, you know, keep your underwear on, not to defend Dershowitz, but he came on my channel and he explained it. I'm getting a massage. Yeah, I kept my underwear on because it was a massage in Florida, not on Epstein's Island. Yeah. But the bottom line, you say like, you know, power protects itself. It's Nuhu Rabadu who says when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. What's clear about all of this is you have these also these nerdy scientists. I never understood the uh, the group orgy with um, Stephen Hawking's rumor, but you have you have Epstein hosting these scientists, gets compromising information on them, and thus you have science captured. You have climate crisis captured. You get politicians out there have a relation with a woman and they say, "Oh, by the way, she's fifteen, and we own you for life." And now we can dictate global policy. We can dictate your Ukraine support policy. Just hypotheticals, but I'm darn certain it's all true. And that's what it. Was a blackmail extortion ring, and they cannot possibly ever bring the perpetrators to justice because it would undermine government as an entity. And it's and uh, and going back to the to the conspiracy thing, like you can, every single time something happens in the conspiratory world, which mind you, I know you I know you know this because it started during JFK, the FBI, and everybody was like conspiracy. They had a hand in it. Let's not be stupid. You can't do something of that magnitude without people involved. I'm a marksman. I'm an expert in two guns. There's absolutely no way Oswald did that shooting. Period with the bolt action. That's neither here nor there. But for Epstein, when he hanged himself, Mo, <laughs> there's it's, it's always one of these. The cameras were off today. The secure the, the guys, one of them felt it's they were o- sleeping. It's always something like the that. The jail when, cell doors were open on the entire yeah, wing. So, so, so it could have been anybody. So, so when you hear something like that and it happens every single time. It, you have to believe that not only are they protected, and you nailed it, there was cameras in every room. And could you imagine, Mo, me and you are, all of us, oh, even Taylor, we're at Epstein's Island, we're chilling, we're famous, it's you. You're at the height of your career, we're, we're there, we're chilling, let's say it was back then, what, 80s or whatever the hell, 90, when was it, 2008? Yeah. He got in trouble. And then, Mo, we're, a, a 16-year-old comes and goes, Chris Cuomo sits with me and you, we take a photo now compromise besides the cameras bro in the rooms where people were hooking up now that piece of shit me and you go back home chris and they're like hey we want a favor from you from your brother from whatever and you me and you go go f yourself and he goes oh really she's 16 how are you going to prove that you didn't do it so i do believe and i hate the word conspiracy i'm more of a coincidence theorist if this guy was Mossad, which what they're saying what a a demonic but clever plan because that's what's happening with diddy they're saying right now Mo is that they he had cameras everywhere. He brought all these elites, not just rappers. When you hear uh, P Diddy, you automatically go, "Okay, what?" He had Chameleon Air and a Little John. Big deal. No, no, no. He had the Prince. He had other people of power. So to use that and not to think that there's something nefarious happening, and you nailed it. I don't know what's gonna happen with the cell phone data, but like, like a uh, Bill Clinton. What were you doing there? that many times after you knew he got in trouble how can you explain Without- bill gates's wife saying melinda on camera i left because of his relationship with that piece of shit yeah because he's That's pure a- evil he's she- evil in body yeah, did you see it bro she goes the guy is pure evil and mom bill gates you know with his nerdy ass kermit the frog it's i think we need to stop with the not saying you i'm just saying uh, the public and you said it earlier Human beings by nature are, we're disgustingly evil. If you go back in time, the torture methods and the killings and the, what we are at, in, in our DNA, 
to think that this guy and they weren't doing this with young people and then covering their asses, I think it's naive. I think we need to stop and go, we caught you. You have to pay the price. I'm, listen, I'm with you. I just I would love to know who the other people are. You and me both. You know, you I mean, find, it, it, you find the other out people on the list or the other people that control if and you were protect. trafficking underaged people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody else was benefiting from the trafficking, right? Sure. Okay. I mean, was he just bringing groups around for his own enjoyment? Yeah. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So, where are they? And you know, to me, it's like it's an unforgivable. Um, dereliction of duty by the, the prosecutors. Well, the, the and full the, disclosure, it wasn't us on Ep Epstein no, Island. No, I know Vinny but, said that, but just want to make I don't it know clear. the guy. <laughs> I was never on his plane. Now I'm getting saying, well, they're like, oh, I can't believe you're covering the Combs case when you know you were at his white. I never went to a white party. Yeah. I don't know Sean Combs. I played basketball against him. Um, Doesn't mean but, you know him. But I, I don't know him. Knock yourself out. You know, try Good to luck. try to place me at his house. But the point is. That's all you, this is the frustration for me. So all you need to do these days is accuse somebody of something. And they're like 90% in the hole. But then when it comes to actually fulfilling the process, nobody gets stuck for the things that they should get stuck for anymore. Yeah. Well, Whether it's like Menendez with the gold bars. Yeah. Like, He's still working. Like what right? happened? <laughs> yeah, what happened? I, I, also, I agree with you. I also think part of the problem is that sometimes we'll jump on these things and then they turn out to be nothing burgers. And then we never fess up. Like, as yeah. part of the media's problem is that we convict somebody. I'm not saying Diddy's innocent or guilty. I have no idea. Obviously, the feds don't raid your house if you're completely innocent of anything. And, and they'll have, that and being have said, it has happened. Yes. Okay? Yeah. We convict him right away. He's guilty. He's child trafficking. Look at him. The video's coming out going, oh, look, he's patting down Justin Bieber looking for a wire. He actually, it looked I, pretty. I know, it looks suspicious, weird. right? But you put anything through that lens now of this guy's a sex trafficker, everything looks suspicious that you're he right. does. But then if it turns out to be nothing. Where's the news reporting on that? No. Nobody ever comes out and goes, you know, we were wrong about that. You and can't we unring the apology. bell. The correction is always a little thing, yep. um, you know, uh, figuratively, right? You never correct. Uh, look, and I've been in a position where you're going to get things wrong, okay? There's a difference between, like, so um, uh, I, I deal with this a lot in the business. There's a difference between being wrong and a lie, okay? Wrong is incorrect, Lie is, I know it's incorrect, and I'm doing it anyway for purposes of deceiving you, and you have a right to know the truth, okay? okay? So not every wrong is a lie. But when we have to correct something that's wrong, which happens, especially on live TV, okay? Which is why there's so much prophylactic language in live reporting. Like when we're talking about numbers of dead and injured, right? Like you, you'll see the next time that I'm doing that, I'm always like, look, these numbers are almost certainly going to change. Yeah, they yeah. may go up, they may go down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, why? Because of experience, I've been so wrong so many times about what's happening. Um, the correction, they come at you, they're only going to correct, you're only going to correct almost always in my experience because of potential litigation. It's Now, I have a different practice. I have people kind of like you, and I've said this before, and I really hope you guys understand this. It is one of the best features of what you guys do. I love how you in real time during the podcast are putting up information for context for people. Mm -hmm. I always say on my podcast and on my TV show, I'll say, now you can Google this for yourself, but and nobody's going to Google it. We're all yeah. lazy. Yeah. You do the work for them during the podcast. Awesome. So I have a policy. When I say something wrong on the show, because guests are too polite, I've been trying to create a different culture on my shows where like, you know, Taylor comes on, she'll be like, no, 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 that's, that's not what he said. He said this. Oh, thank you. I got it wrong. So that's how it, most people won't do that mm -hmm. because they're too polite. They don't want to correct the host. I have a couple of Robs in my control room who will get in there and say, no, it was 2008. It wasn't 2006. And I will correct it in real time. Look, I, the media is not in the business of correcting itself, and I'll tell you why. Your critic base is your competition, and they are dying to jump on you for getting something wrong. But they won't correct themselves. But they'll create a false standard for you. They will kill you. They will kill me for doing it, but they won't correct themselves. And that happens in these situations. So we let Epstein go. We let COVID origination go yep what matters more okay and i'm like obsessed with this because and it is personal i have long COVID, and i did not like seeing my blood work 
and seeing this spike protein in my blood and these little micro clots and shit, it scared me. Holy shit. And why? It sets you up for inflammatory diseases. Cancer's an inflammatory disease. Mm -hmm. I'm only 53. Freaked me out. I'm doing what they're telling me to do. There's not a whole lot of science behind it, but it's, it's getting there. So I am long COVID sensitive. We don't know where it comes from. The government will say, not sure there is a long COVID. Yeah, I know. You're also not desperate to get me an answer to that question. And you should be. And we do that a lot. We don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. We just gave the Chinese a pass. Yeah, they don't really want to let us in the lab. What? What? The, <laughs> our lab? The one that we own? No, their, their oh, lab structure in Wuhan, they were like, yeah, you don't get any more access. We gave you the interviews. That's enough. Holy. And now why do you back off? Because we're pussies? No. They own a huge chunk of our debt. Mm -hmm. And they control a huge chunk of our economy. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of scared of them. Because not only can they hurt us economically, they have no concern of popular pushback in their country. Uh -huh. So they can do whatever the power structure wants to do. So, They're not us. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 Mo, you're, so with your long COVID, they can't say definitively if it was just from the disease or you're vaccinated. I, I took the first two. Gotcha. Was it the Moderna one? The two one. Yeah. I took those. Then I kept getting COVID. So like my doctors would say, um, you know what? Uh, it is a different iteration every time. I don't want you to have the booster uh, because you just got over the virus. You have so many antibodies. And then I would get it again. Yeah. And then it, it became like maybe... I'm uniquely susceptible because of a combination of factors, a weak natural immune system, and that the COVID messed me up. If you could go back right now to when you were deciding to take the vaccine or not, would you, would you do it? Would you I take probably it? would take it. I have never faulted people for not taking it. I've just said the obvious, which is if they have a rule that if you're not vaccinated, or let's reverse it, that... To go to school, to go to work, to go here, to go there, to do this, you must be vaccinated. Then you must prepare yeah. for uh, being disenfranchised. They're telling you this is how it's going to be. So you don't have to get it, but don't expect to have your kids go to school. Don't expect to be able to do this and do that because I'm telling you right now, they're telling you that's what's going to happen. That was my position. Um, I'm often used in this split screen with Don Lemon where he is – saying something messed up about people who don't get vaccinated. I forget what it is. I exactly. remember it was something like, and I'm sitting like there on screen the like this, <laughs> which is like, kind of like my resting Mo face. You know, yeah. I'm just like sitting there like the fuck is he saying? But <laughs> that I'm on TV and I'm listening to him. I get given credit for what he said because I'm on TV at the same yeah, time. I, yeah. I don't care if you get vaccinated or not. Um, we have real questions about, what the vaccine does and doesn't do. I've seen the data. There is a fundamental lack of curiosity about Weird. it Weird. because nobody wants to go near COVID because it's a political minefield. So they just don't investigate. Well, but, but also, I mean, you're, you're not you anymore, but the mainstream media or the legacy media is reliant on pharma dollars and pharma adver advertising dollars as well. And they're not going to question the, the efficacy and the safety of the vaccine. Listen, I have for years, I, I get the argument, okay? I have, I have at one time, one time in my career, did I have corporate, in my opinion, okay? I don't even know that I could prove it. But in my opinion, I had corporate interference. And it was when I was the, I don't know if I was correspondent or anchor at the time of 2020, mm -hmm. right? Which is an amazing news magazine, yeah. right? ABC News. And we developed the black light stories about germs and where there are things in the gyms and the hotel room yeah. and it was hugely popular yeah so we did it on cruise ships oh god and we went on the disney cruise line yeah. sperm everywhere and <laughs> everything is everywhere oh god. anything that comes out of your body is everywhere Every oh in any place that a lot of people go okay and even though that's common sense, it's amazing to see it on the black light. Like, how on the ceiling? Uh, is it uh, yeah. semen on the ceiling? Did you, did you ever see, it was a comedy bit where they were like impersonating a, a crime show and there's like, there's sperm on the wall. Sperm, yeah. And then it flashes to oh, the, the woman's God. face and there's like, yeah. it, was, it was so filthy but hilarious. It is Back hilarious. Comedy could be comedy. And it's really relatable. I mean, people want to know, right? I mean, you know, we're, we're very, you know, funk phobic. So Disney 
I worked for Disney yeah, because they own ABC they News. Own, yeah. That got touchy. Uh-oh. That's the only time. I don't know who advertises on my show. Um, I'm told that people have been giving me heat for something. Back in the day, and actually Morning Joe did this, you know, the morning show, Morning yeah. Joe. It used to say Morning Joe by Starbucks. Do you remember that when it first started? Well, first, worse. Nobody beginning. said shit about that because they all wanted to be on the show. All, all the same people. Remember, your competition is your critic base. They wanted to be on Joe's show, so they weren't saying anything. I think I would rather have my show sponsored, like Vinny's show sponsored. He's not a news organization, but a news organization sponsored by Fiji Water and say, hey, thanks to Fiji for sponsoring the show tonight. I'd rather have that than six different commercial sponsors because, as you just said, everybody thinks I'm in the pocket of whoever's advertising already. Well, true, but, but if it's sponsored by but Fiji I've Water. But I've never had pharma pressure. I wouldn't give a shit if they said anything to me. I've investigated the hell out of big pharma. Um, sometimes wrongly, like I was way too aggressive about them not testing antidepressants on kids and wanting black box warnings. And they wound up putting on black box warnings. And I now feel like, you know what? People need antidepressants. Uh, kids need antidepressants. The suicide rates spike when people don't get access to medication. So we may have been too aggressive. I have never caved to an advertiser and I never would. I could say Fiji's my sponsor. Yeah. And if Fiji did something wrong, I would stick my foot right up their ass. I believe. Oh, yeah, and uh, we have to move on. But, so, but, but Chris, here's my question to you, though. What, what if, like, when you, had, when you wanted to talk about a story, how'd you know, like, Jeff Zucker, the, it didn't come to him? Did anything have to get run by him to approve or not approve something that you wanted to talk about? Because he's answering. Here's the truth. Uh, Jeff Zucker fired me. Yeah. Okay? I believe he fired me for bad reason. Okay? I did not lie to him. I didn't lie to anybody about anything I did to help my brother. Yeah. All right? That's just the truth, and I will prove it, which is not an easy thing to do, by I, the way. I believe To it. prove you didn't do something is not easy. That's why the presumption works the other way. Yeah. No more. <laughs> now I got to litigate, and I got to prove it. Fine. That said, he is the best TV producer I've ever worked with in my life. Wow. When you are in my business, it is absolutely collegial, okay? Meaning what? I want to know what Jeff Zucker thinks about what I'm doing. He's a great um, producer of TV. Did Jeff Zucker said to me, you're going to be nice to Vinny today. And if you're not nice to Vinny, you have a problem. Never. Never. Did he tell me you're going to go after Trump? No. Did he ever stop me from having people on who were Trumpers? I don't know if you guys watched me on CNN. I always I know you did. had his a, supporters a on. A lot of people. And I would often argue with them. But at the end of every interview, I would say, you are welcome back. As long as they didn't take a shot at another guest. You can say whatever you want about me. Yeah. But I would say, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you. you. You're you welcome back. And people would like laugh, be like, welcome back. You know, you just like beat the shit out of this guy. You're welcome back. Hey, I'll have the good faith argument with you. Yeah. I don't agree with your argument. I'm going to say that. But it, I'm not demonizing you. And he was fine with it. Good. Was CNN a function of groupthink on COVID? Only as much as all of us were a function of groupthink. We didn't know what was going on. Everybody was working in an emergency. They made one of the biggest mistakes in the history of public policy. A white coat has no business doing political messaging. I agree. I know Tony Fauci. I've known him a long time. I have a very positive assessment of him. He should have never been in front of the country telling us why we were doing certain things. That's political. Yep. Trump punted to him. Biden punted to him yep. and they both did it because they didn't want to own the situation I, uh, I, and that I, was I unforgivable agree. and they made mistakes i'm not surprised okay what bothers me is we're not learning from the mistakes we're not assessing the mistakes there was no 9-11 commission about how we handled the pandemic nope. the next one happens guess what Vinny? fuck same thing we're gonna go right down the I, same I, I agree 100 percent. that scares the shit out of me but all right guys last story it actually is less than 15 minutes Viva, uh, well, Trump gag order. We don't. Have, we have ten minutes. Oh, don't I? I can talk fast. No, I love it. Break it down. <laughs> Spe- like, you're, well, a law- you're a lawyer. Spe- it, it, the segue was actually, you know, the the, ac- the, tr- the accusation uh, contains the power, and we have, you know, throw the accusation out there, draw some distinctions. You know, Joe Biden gets accused of uh, sexually abusing Tara Reid, even though they know it's true. It gets a pass. Donald Trump gets his E. Jean Carroll judgment. Psycho. The other case coming out of New York is the, uh, you know, turning of the Stormy Daniels hush money payment into a, what was it, 37 felony charge indictment. And he's going to trial if it goes to trial on time on April 15. There have been pretrial motions to gag because, you know, we live in 
something of a communist nation now, uh, the judge issued a gag order at the request of it's Alvin Bragg out of New York. Yeah, Alvin Bragg, Soros-funded Alvin Bragg, issues a gag order, which many people, including legal brains that I do de defer to, Robert Barnes, uh, Alan Dershowitz, say is unconstitutional. Says he can't make public statements about court staff, their family, potential witnesses that might be relevant to the trial, yada, yada. It was a limited gag order issued last week. Alvin Bragg comes out over the weekend, or maybe last week, and says, you know, Judge, uh, it doesn't mention your daughter, and it doesn't mention my family, and doesn't mention me or you, you might want to revise that gag order to make it even a bigger gag. And the judge comes in and revises his you know, hitherto still unconstitutional gag order to add a provision that Trump cannot talk about the DA, his family, or the judge, the court, and his family. It just so happens, you know, when you have this discourse, that the world has now found out that Judge Juan Marchand, his daughter, is president of some... I keep forgetting the term, but like a political activist, not think tank, a, a marketing camp. Got you. And her two biggest clients are um, Schiff, Adam Schiff, Adam Schiff. Big Schiff, yeah, and another political action committee. That the daughter is a political activist, to say the least, worked on Kamala Harris's campaign, had discussions with her father back in 2019 about how her father loathes politicians who use Twitter. This is this is the judge's the daughter. The judge's daughter. Oh God. Uh, and now the media, you get your Liz Cheney's out there and your other media. Pundit saying, oh, Trump is attacking the daughter, as if we're, we're talking about Baron Trump, who's 16 years old. No, Trump is not attacking anybody, but links to the story in the New York Post that exposes all of this. The judge's daughter is a political activist who's been discussing with her father how the father hates tweets. Uh, it represents Adam Schiff, who raised, I think, 70 or 90 million dollars, mi tens of millions of, no, sorry, her both clients raised an aggregate 93 million off of this prosecution. Adam Schiff sending out his emails using this marketing campaign mm -hmm. saying, Donald Trump's being indicted. This is a you know, very serious thing. Can, I, can you spare 10 bucks? Yeah. And I think Schiff has raised 20 million off of this. Yeah. So the judge comes out with a gag order basically to prevent the aggregate knowledge of the interwebs to disclose, dissect, and publicize the familial corruption in this case, the prosecutorial corruption in this case. And it's just the next step in weaponizing the court system with these weaponized prosecutions and then weaponizing the procedure itself to create unconstitutional gag orders so that they can then presumably default Trump, issue sanctions, and do whatever they did it in New York. They're going to try to do it here. It's wild. It's an injustice. And now, apparently, Trump and others cannot uh, publicly talk about it, directly or indirectly. Chris, what are your thoughts on that? So, gag orders are problematic, um, except when there is a real sensitivity involved, which I agree with you. You don't really have here. Um, you do have a little bit of a problem, like, you know, it's going to be hard to find anybody who doesn't have any kind of conflict at all. Now, this is more than just no conflict. This is heavy conflict. But you, you can make a similar argument uh, about Clarence Thomas and his wife and yep. whether or not he should have been on the bench for anything that has to do with anything that his wife was involved in politically. You know, you'll have one side wave that away. Now you have the other side wave this away. That's part of our problem. You yep. only see the flaws in the other side. That's the two-party poison. Again, gag orders unconstitutional. Alan would say that. Alan is a mentor of mine and a friend, um, and I have him on the show all the time. Uh, gag orders have been found to be constitutional, depending on their extent and who they're... So I don't have a legal issue with it as a concept. I do in its application. I am very increasingly afraid about censorship. It is happening more and more, which is weird because we're getting more and more outlets and access. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why there's more and more censorship because there's such desperation for control. I do believe in what you're saying. There is weaponization of prosecution of political opposition. And I, rem I remember this beginning with the impeachment of Donald Trump the first time. That is a political process. Okay, so I'm not as worried about it being a perversion of the prosecution process because it's a political process. Yeah. However, high crimes and misdemeanors is not a mystery, okay? <laughs> we know where it came from. These guys came over from the UK. They didn't like what had just been happening in the UK mm -hmm. where they were prosecuting each other oh, yeah, yeah. to death. Yeah. They didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So they created a standard with, look, if you're going to impeach the guy, it's got to be for something that's a big, 
deal. Yeah. Otherwise, let the people decide. Yeah. Okay? They blew right past that standard. They put in this guy, Mueller, who everybody loved because they thought he was a Republican. Turns out he just wasn't on his game anymore. Yeah. So they weren't getting the leadership and the stewardship of this. I don't believe that you should have special counsels. I'm not saying that they're unconstitutional or illegal. I'm saying they're impractical. Okay. I want accountability. I don't want you to give the investigation to him. Who the, who's him? Who's, I, did, yeah. I didn't vote for this guy. Yeah. I want it to be the AG. I think they should handle everything in-house. Yeah. Um, if you have a conflict, disclose the conflict, but do your job. Yeah. And it's very dangerous. You know, the last thing that they agreed on, the two sides, what? in a major way, get rid of the independent counsel statute. Do you remember that? No. What? So the independent counsel statute was Ken Starr, Bill Clinton. Yeah, right? during, during so the whole Clinton or- appoints the first one, this guy named Fisk, to look into what they're saying. I'll, I'll appoint an independent counsel. Let him figure it out. Let's take it out of politics. Yeah. Oh, great, great idea. He starts sniffing around Hillary Clinton. Oh, no. All of a sudden, they're like, whoa. And the, Repu- <laughs> and the, Republicans, <laughs> the Republicans are like, oh, good. Let's oh, put our own guy in there. Oh, they God. put in Ken Starr. And off to the races he goes. Oh, man. He starts looking at legal transactions yeah. that was called Whitewater. Yeah. He winds up with a blowjob in the Oval Office. <laughs> Why? Because he could go wherever he yeah. wanted and he had unlimited funds, unlimited stuff. Yeah. Both sides agree to let that statute That's expire so and not have it anymore. <laughs> they have too much power because you couldn't control because it's an illusion. Yeah. It's an illusion. So do I care about gag orders? Depends. Do I think it is right to have Trump gagged? No. Again, beat the guy at the polls. Beat him with better arguments. When you silence him, you empower him. And we keep seeing it with censorship again and again and again. You remember in the in the first impeachment, they actually presented the argument that high crimes and misdemeanors didn't even need to be a crime. It could be anything. If they don't like him, they can impeach him. And then the second time, well, then the, forget the second impeachment, but now under Joe Biden, you got AOC saying, well, where's the crime? Where's the crime? Yeah. Rico's not a crime. So now it has to be a crime, but back then it didn't have to be a crime. Rico is a crime. Oh, well, there's no question. Hey, she's <laughs> wrong about that. But the, the biggest issue here is that they're gagging their political rival in an election season. Yeah. And you'll wrong. remember they, they literally changed the laws back in 2022 to facilitate a Biden victory. They changed the law with the E. Jean Carroll extending the statute of limitations on adults claiming to be victims of sexual abuse, specifically so E. Jean Carroll could sue. They gave her the window. She sued. She got her corrupt jury in New York. And now they're literally gagging Trump during an election cycle. It is nothing but lawfare election interference that I hope everybody has to see. But some people like the rules being broken when it's to their advantage. So that's your question? Everybody likes the rules being broken when it's to their advantage. Not me. I'm a principled person. Please, I don't yeah, like it. It's part, it's part of our problem. Though. So let me ask you guys a question, which I agree with. Uh, uh, so the gag order is on Trump because he's trying to reveal the fact of the relationship you know, with the daughter. He, and her. They're gagging everybody. It's just only operative with Trump. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but here's my thing, though. Well, can, can The fact that that's a fact and it's out there. I mean, New York Post is, is, is reporting it. Yeah, that he's gagged, oh, no, but, but why, and, why aren't other people just... Well, not just that. New York Post reported it, and uh, I was going to say Dick Cheney, but Liz Cheney comes out and says, this is harassment, this is threats, because Trump posted an, uh, the link to the article, yeah. and in the article, it, it, it features a photo of, of the daughter. I mean, listen, say what you want about them, though, guys. They they're play dirty. Good. <laughs> no, they play dirty, but and that's why I go to the, the uniparty. The other side... And I'm tired of people going, well, they need to learn how to... They're all on the same freaking Oh, by the way, they do whatever and, the they want. And they lie. You have uh, Andrew Weissman coming out and saying that Trump posted a video or a photo of Biden bound, gagged, with a bullet hole in his head on the back of the pickup truck. And I'm like... He was not gagged. He was bounded. It's a joke, and they have one of Trump as well. No bullet hole either. Lawrence Tribe, who floated the 14th Amendment, third uh, section three of section the 14th three. Amendment, he, about uh, which was designed for the Civil War, um, and whether or not you could ever hold office after that. Oh, really? But it could be cured by Congress. It was a way of just weeding out the rebellion. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so, so so Tribe floats that idea. His legal theory gets shut down. But he also repeats the lie. So they lie. They make fat threats out of nothing. You get Liz Cheney saying this is harassment. And they send that dog whistle, you know, that, that ringing bell to their base. Go th- mail threats to her. Harass her so that we can then say Trump did this. It's, it's dirty. It's deceitful. But bottom line... Trump has not made any overt threats, and you already have laws to prevent that. Anyhow, you don't need to prevent criminal speech through a gag order. Yeah, I agree with all that. I just feel like just see it for what it is as what you call the uniparty. Mm-hmm. You know, I was so upset with Jim Jordan, who I'm I'm happy to have on the show. He got pissed off at CNN about the Ohio State stuff, which I never even really reported on, but he wouldn't come on anymore. All right. 
So now I'm at News Nation. He'll come on. Great. Yeah. I think it's really important to have everybody on the couch. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, not like on the couch. That's going to be snipped. Yeah, not like <laughs> you are in trouble now. <laughs> 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 we got it. I didn't we mean like it. casting couch. I meant like, what did mommy do to you? You know, <laughs> on like a ther I think therapy, you I know, like you, you think you casting were the couch. Perf, what was there I'm already? just saying, see it. They were right that the impeachment of Donald Trump, the idea that you were doing it for historical precedent, I, I don't buy it. Is that is that an argument? Yeah, I think it's a weak one. You are never going to remove him. I don't understand what the purpose is of impeaching someone that you know you have zero chance to, to, of removing. To desecrate the value of the Constitution and the pillars of society. Th this It was to break the glass, to cross the Rubicon, so that it never carries the same weight ever again. It's to destroy the institution. Well, they, well, and they ruined, and, and to give people the talking points of, which I see it all the time from my friends and family in California, well, he was impeached twice, or, yeah. or, or Russian collusion. Oh, yeah, he was an asset. 87 indictments. These are these are exactly these are just Mo, these are just talking points that they're going to use like, I know. for, for public what, discussion. What I'm saying is see it everywhere. Why did I bring up Jim Jordan? They had high ground about the impeachment. Man, what a distraction this was. We have so many real problems we should be working on. Yeah. Not that they'd work on them if yeah. they hadn't had the impeachments in the way. Yeah. Um, but it was they were right to say it. They go after Biden right now out of the box mm -hmm. the same way that the democrats went after trump and it was i was surprised okay and people are like what no i was i was surprised and it was sad to me that i would talk to these guys and it's like they don't remember what they said to me and why they said it it's like no no no, this is real, what we're doing with Biden. It's totally different than what they did. And I'm like, how is it totally different? You're doing the same thing. You're distracting from what matters to me and my life to go after this guy so that you can hurt him politically. And you see it with Trump. These brag cases are problematic. The idea that paying off a porn star or whatever, I don't even like calling her that, paying people <laughs> off, okay? Uh, was it illegal to pay them off? No. Catch and kills have been around for a long right. time. Right? Was it wrong uh, for the way Michael Cohen paid for it? I don't know. But if it was a violation of campaign finance law, you're really going to prosecute a president slash former president over that, yeah. let alone during an election? Now, let's say, well, the timing doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Yeah, it always matters. matters. And I think that it is at a minimum a bad look. And at maximum, it's bad for all of us because it is making us hate each other. And I don't, I, I just don't see where it ends unless we stop doing these things. But the only way to do it is to bust the party structure. Oh, uh, and maximum in election interference. I mean, some of that was not even true. Like the Russian collusion, it was bought and paid for. And you were talking about there's no one correction. There was no correction after that. Like it was literally fraudulent information bought and paid for from a political adversary. From Hillary. And still today, people will say, well, he colluded with Russia. And it's like the correction was never made. And so what? it did the damage that it well, was. He was, to. he was never, there was never a conspiracy case made convincingly. There was never a Russian asset. Maybe to made. us, but to the public, I well, would argue that no it was convincingly. It, by the, way, the ultimate irony of all of that is that Hillary Clinton and the DNC that paid for the Steele dossier, they also hid that payment. There was no that's right felony yeah. indictment. There was a five thousand dollar fine way, for Hillary. Got, I, get, I don't know how much she got fined. Eight thousand bucks in the DNC. <laughs> you literally, you freaking demon! She paid for all this thing and sent us into a whirlwind of shit for four years. And that, by the way. I know you remember that you were on CNN. That's all we were talking about because they kept pushing it. And then now the smoke clears. And it's like, wait a minute. Well, they, talk, here. they talk about it because <laughs> it works. Here. But I will tell you something. Again, you know, I've been in this business a long time. I know Paul Manafort, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, you have Trump's uh, campaign mm -hmm. chair. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there is a chance he will come back. The guy is a master Monster. of how to work. Uh, conventions and you know how to figure out your delegate count and where you, and I, I know it's a no-brainer because Trump uh, is all alone in this, but you need things to be done the right way. There, there's a good argument to be made. Well, what do you mean he was convicted? Yeah, he was convicted, and it was a, you know it was it was a real case, but it was a harsh prosecution, and he did his time. I mean, do we believe in forgiveness or not? So that's Manafort. Manafort knows he had no business going into the meeting that he was in. Um, Roger Stone knows 
that he had no business taking a meeting with a guy who said that he may be able to get information from a Russian asset. We know in this business of politics, you don't take meetings with foreign people who want involvement in the election. People know that that's a scary thing to do. Is that collusion? Yeah, as a behavior, not as a crime. Mm-hmm. Collusion is only a crime in securities law. Yeah. Conspiracy is the crime. Yeah. Did they conspire? I don't think there's even a whisper of a case. Did they do things they shouldn't have done that were political malpractice? Yeah, but that's not a prosecution. Exactly. Everybody it's does. not an impeachment. Yep. And that was my feeling all along. People say, no, 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 you're only saying that now. No. That's demonstrably false. But you reported on the impeachment. Of course I did. You of course to. I did. What it was you? the most important thing going on. Yeah. Um, so look, the points are all well taken. I'm just saying, see it everywhere because they're both playing these games. All the, do they play it the same way to the same degree? What difference does it make? Behind yeah. closed doors somewhat. <laughs> but what difference does it make? You know what I mean? It's going on on both sides as a distraction from what should be mattering. 100%. I agree. But hey, all right, guys, that was the show. Chris, thank you so much. You're getting on a plane. You're leaving us. Yes. But you're going to be back next month. As soon as you guys want me. I love you. Uh, but Chris, <laughs> thank you so much. You David. Know, I, I just realized you've been calling him Mo because it's Quo Mo. And Quo the Mo. Mo. I thought you've forgotten. And we'll have, a meeting <laughs> after, we'll have a meeting after this. I thought you were like a genius. You just I figured did, that I out now. Totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lawyer. What Mo? The, yeah, Maybe a middle name? No. Oh, wait, he said Clarine Jean-Pierre. He got that. <laughs> he killed it. He killed that. He corrected me. Now I know. You're, you ha- you know French? Are you from oh, yeah, yeah, Did I, you correct me in the last show? I was like, it makes sense now. Oh, yeah. They, they, I was like, Sean Michael. You mean like Sean Michael. But Chris, thank you so much, brother. I can't wait to. Vinny, I love you and I'm a fan. I, I appreciate it. Hey, Robert, thank you. Yep. Kelly, everybody in the back. Taylor, God bless you. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, I am performing on, and I hope you're going to be there, April 11th. You better go to. I'll be April there. April 11th, Thursday at 8 p.m. at the Miami Improv. Robert Gargiulo is performing there. They spelled my name wrong. It's V-I-N-N-I-E. Uh, you can get <laughs> tickets at uh, MiamiImprov.com. <laughs> guys, please don't wait. I think the show is going to uh, sell out because we have a lot of people going. That being said, again, Chris, thank you, guys and gals. Guys, if you haven't subscribed already, click on the link, subscribe, put the notification uh, button. And like we were just talking about, guys, it's them against us. Don't let them get into your head and love each other because that's the key. That's the secret of life. I'll see you guys next week. Peace and love. Vinny, help.